Years ago, as history tells us, leprosy was prevalent in the United States. And in an attempt to control the spread of the disease, it's a disease, it attacks. It shows itself on the outside, it starts on the inside. When it shows itself on the outside, it is not pleasant to see. It attacks the extremities of the body. <clears throat> when the blood is contaminated by the disease, and the blood has to go to the extremities, leprosy attacks. There's no blood flowing. The toes, the fingers, the nose, the ears. Now you think I'm here to give you some kind of educational <laughs> background on illnesses and disease. No. We have not experienced that all since the 19... Anyone help me? There's a little kid over here who has given us an answer. <clears throat> Before you were born, buddy boy. <clears throat> uh, I want to say the 1920s, maybe? I read all of this. And in order, as I said, to stop the spread of the disease, the United States government transported the lepers, to Hawaii, to an island among the Hawaiian islands. And established a colony there, while they also provided what was then a possible medication, but it wasn't, quote, perfected till later on. I'll tell you this because a priest by the name of Father Damien worked among the lepers and devoted his life to their spiritual welfare. And Father Damien himself died of leprosy in the Hawaiian Islands. <laughs> I gave you, a, I've seen this disease and what it does to people. <clears throat> I gave you this picture to let you know that anyone then who suffered from leprosy was marginalized, put on the outskirts of society. When I was young, <clears throat> I was privileged to be in the care of Mother now St. Teresa. I went with her, was taken really, whether I wanted to go or not wasn't the issue. <clears throat> Derek, come along. <laughs> That's how she called me. My mother and Mother Teresa were good friends. And I spent many a time in her care. Didn't stop her work, but I was there. I could only sit in the van, the dispensary van. I was not allowed to get out. The sisters who were distributing medications were protected, and the lepers came by the dozens because in that part of my, close to my hometown, the government secluded them. 
and built them little one-room brick houses, one room, so that you'd separate them from the rest of society. And I would watch from the windows. Now the sisters were not allowed to touch any one of them, except if they were dressing their wounds. And then, with the most precautions that they could adopt. Leprosy, my friends, is a painful disease. Listen to this, please. It's a painful disease for those who are watching. It is not a painful disease for the leper because they are devoid of any feeling. A leper comes to Jesus and wants to be cured. What else would a leper want? Good health. And Jesus cures the man. That was the gospel the deacon proclaimed for us. And many a time Jesus would say to them, now go, don't tell anyone about this. <clears throat> but as the gospel said, the man publicized it to everybody. Leprosy does not eradicate itself. It just brings a stop to the deterioration of the extremities. A leper is never cured on the outside, even now, in places where leprosariums, is what it's called, are established. <clears throat> The medication stops the disease from making progress. But the fingers become stumps and the toes become stumps. The nose recedes, the ears disappear. The disease is never cured. It is arrested. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, he touched him and said to him, I do will it that you be cured, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, which meant he felt a change in his physical condition and he was made clean. And then, as Mark tells us in the Gospel, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Some of these words that are used in the English translation uh, sound very abrupt. But uh, in Middle Eastern languages, he dismissed him as really, he let him go. That's what it meant. That's what it means. Then Jesus said to the man, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priests. And just in case you misunderstand it, I'll explain what the biblical meaning of that is. And offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed, and that will be proof for them. The priest was the representative of the people priest is still the representative of the people. Show yourself to the priest because the understanding was that leprosy was your fault. It's your moral fault. You sinned, so you have this disease. You know what? That's kind of how disease is looked upon even today. Many times people feel that this is the result of my sin. What was my sin? What did I do? That kind of thing. I don't have an answer for that, but I'll tell you that was the interpretation. Go and show yourself to the priest, because you had to make an offering that was prescribed in Jewish law. And when people saw the offering you made, that was an offering only for leprosy. <coughs> so in other words, people are going to understand that you have been made clean. Now you're making the offering. That will be proof for them, said Jesus. 
And then the man went away and began to publicize the matter, and the, and the news spread all over the place. Jesus couldn't even go any place. People said, wow, this is the guy, this is the guy who cleaned him. This is the guy who cured him. This is the guy who, this is the guy. And naturally, anyone with any kind of illness, even a migraine headache, would come and say, can you cure me? So no matter what Jesus said to the leper, the opposite happened. Lepers were ostracized, marginalized, put on the sidelines. They could not be with healthy people, or people who thought they were healthy anyway. <clears throat> you get the picture. My brothers and sisters, leprosy is not a prevalent disease in the United States. There are all kinds of other illnesses that attack the body, but leprosy has been eradicated. <clears throat> Just like polio, it's eradicated all over the world. All over the world. We do remember this, <clears throat> and hopefully, you know what, the pandemic will be eradicated all over the world. There is some kind of cure, as we say, that'll stop it. Now, I have to admit that I didn't check this out today, but most of us have marks from, no matter where you were born, you have marks on your arm from the vaccination you received when you were a kid? Yes, no, what? I felt mine. I can see it too. Leprosy? My brothers and sisters, the words I want to apply today to your life and to mine is the word marginalized. Put on the margin. You remember a piece of paper? It's got a margin. You want to make little notes? You make it in the margin. Sometimes you have note papers that have margins on both sides. Marginalized people are those who are cut off from society. Our society today puts people in the margins. I can't list everything for you, but I just want to use some of the marginalized people today. And I'm not saying this because some of you fit in that category, and you know what? Hey, at 75, I'm in that category. <laughs> The aged, they're put on the margins of society. They're always in the way. That's what they say. So they put them aside. You can't go any place now, off the page. Think about the other side of it. The children are marginalized. They're not given the attention they should be given. You're on the side of the page. You're not in the main section. You're on the side. Give the children time. Give the aged time. Give the sick time. Don't marginalize them. They're the lepers of society today. And Jesus worked with a culture of encounter. He got into contact with the marginalized of his day. Our encounter can also happen, not the way Jesus did it, physical encounter, but think about this. We are here for prayer. We can encounter people who are marginalized in our prayer. They don't have to be young. They don't have to be teenagers. They're also marginalized quite a bit. And they don't have to be the elderly. 
but people who are put on the margins of society. And there are various social groups that are marginalized, and they need the healing that comes from the grace of Jesus Christ. We don't want to be counted as lepers. It's dreadful. That's why I explained the disease a little bit. I come from a medical family, and they had to deal with illnesses and disease. We don't want to be there. You don't want to be sick, period. Neither do I. By the way, I'll get my shot. They call it now, they, on, on the internet, they're calling it a jab. <coughs> I'm just telling you all the latest stuff, you know. I'm going for my jab <coughs> on the 22nd. We have, look at this pandemic. It has ruined so many lives. So many lives. And after almost a year, there is a cure, at least we think it is. And it's not just our society today. It's not just the United States. It's all over the world. And there are variations of this disease that are springing up here and there. And in our frustration, sometimes the people who suffer are marginalized. He encountered them. He can encounter the marginalized even now. You and I will bow our heads in quiet prayer and whisper a special one for all who are marginalized in society today. Go for it. <laughs> 